Okay, guys, what is the best way to hold and use each instrument? So we're going to start off with the scalpel. And with, with the scalpel, one thing that you want to make sure that you do is not do what you would do for a spay, for instance, where you're doing a continuous incision around those teeth. You want to do little stab incisions. So with the scalpel, you want to hold it at about 15 degree angle and go down fairly firmly, but not excessively firm to the marginal bone and just continue to make those little stab incisions as you go. So I'm going to show you another really quick video that will demonstrate uh, that in this mandibular canine extraction. And then once you get up to the large diastema between that premolar and the canine, then you can be more consistent with what you would do for a spay, not do the stab incisions, but do a more continuous incision. So this will demonstrate that fairly readily. When we're starting an incision for a flap over teeth, we're going to make little stab incisions. And note how we are doing that here adjacent to the teeth, just going down to the bone. And then when we get to that diastema between the premolar and the canine, we do a continuous incision right there on the dorsal aspect. So one other thing that we want to point out here, the closer we get our fingers to the tip of the instrument, the more control that we have. So when you're making those little stab incisions, you want to make sure that not only do you have your fingers to the tip of the instrument, but you also want to have them against part of the patient. So you see that I've got that scalpel between my index finger and my thumb, and my middle finger is on the palate, it's on the canine, and it's on that third incisor. So I've got total control over that scalpel and minimize or eliminate any chance that that's going to slip and tear my flap, especially if you keep that 15 degree angle between the scalpel and the tooth itself. Uh, you shouldn't run into that at all. So let's look at the next phase. Uh, once we get a flap up, then we've got to, or, or once we've uh, made our incision, we get to get that flap mobilized, we use the periosteal elevator. And here is a molt periosteal elevator. These come in two millimeter and four millimeter ends. So if you flip that over, you'll see that you've got a four millimeter end or a two millimeter end on either side. So uh, very convenient. The two millimeter is to be used when you first start. So you first start, you running into areas between teeth and corners. The small area helps considerably. And then when you go to the removal of the larger portion of the flap, and this video that I'm going to show you will show you that, you'll go to the larger end. So that is kind of a milled finish there. You see the striations. That is not the side that goes to the patient. If you turn that over, that is how it goes on the patient. So from a handling standpoint and a ease of use standpoint, if you have a pen or pencil, guys, pick that up and kind of get the feel here. Uh, you want your index finger on the top of that instrument, again, close to the end, and then just cradle that in your palm, just like you see there. And then when you use it on the patient, all you need to do is turn it over like this, and it's very effective. You can use it very effectively. And I know you've probably got questions about these instruments. Uh, if you guys stay till the end after the q and I'm going to give you a link that will let you download our instrument list that we use and that we recommend to all of our students. And it's got the products on there. It's got how you contact the people who have those products. Uh, so I'm happy to share that with you guys uh, at the end after the Q&A. So let's take a look at uh, how we actually use that periosteal elevator in this video. This is the correct use of a periosteal elevator. What we want to do is go the entire periphery of the attached gingiva using that exact same lever technique where we're not really going apical. We're pushing down on the bone toward the tooth, and then we're just twisting to lift 
that attached gingiva off of the bone. And we're going the entire periphery of the attached gingiva before we start to get any more aggressive. We want a zone where we've already exposed that before we start to move more apical and not as much the twisting movement. So this is the safest way to mobilize a flap. You'll see that we get good exposure very quickly in this live patient. And also note that my fingers were at the very tip of that instrument during that whole procedure. That gives us maximum control. Okay, so I hope that gave you a, a really good idea about how to use that periosteal elevator. The next phase of this is removing our bone, and we do that with a 701 L burr, a cross-cut tapered fissure burr. And in order to facilitate that the best, you can use it like I have it here, or if you are working in a different orientation, you can have it where it's pointing uh, away or, or down. So either way is fine, either like that or like that. But here is how you actually hold the instrument. Instead of having it cupped in your hand like you do that periosteal elevator, you just want to have it draped over the back of your web between the thumb and the index finger, just like you see there. So let's take a look at how that works in a video. When we're using our handpiece with a burr for sectioning or removing bone, we use that modified pin grasp like you see there, just like we did for the periosteal elevator. And then it's short, quick movements to remove the bone, not putting much pressure at all, just letting the burr do the work, kind of like a painting motion as you are observing now. So the next step, once we've removed bone, We've got all that vestibular bone gone, sometimes all the way up to the root tip if it's a tooth that doesn't have much or any periodontal disease. And then we have our little grooves that we create on either side of the tooth in order to place our luxator. So here is how we want to hold that luxator. Again, it's right in our the palm of our hand. We've got our index finger up to the tip and very effective. You have a lot of control over that by using that that um, elevator or luxator like that and just to clarify an elevator and a luxator nowadays is pretty much the same instrument uh, luxator used to be a real thin instrument it was used just to break down the periodontal ligament between the bone and the tooth and then a thicker elevator was used to kind of manhandle the tooth and get it out of the out of the socket now with our extraction techniques and some of the tips we're talking about here today, we're removing more bone. We don't need a really staunch elevator like we used to have. So these are all hybrids now where, uh, especially if you see the winged elevators by Miltex, like we see here, this is what we use. This is what we recommend. Uh, those are uh, very strong instruments. They can be used to uh, luxate and also to elevate. So one, uh, once we've got that tooth out, one thing that I want to share with you today is a little technique that um, I don't know that I developed it, but I ho hopefully have showed a lot of people how this works and they're using this in their practices. This is actually a what we call the football technique because we're using a football burr and this will hopefully, this video will clarify what I mean by that. Once our extractions are complete, generally with periodontal disease, or in this case, stomatitis with a cat, there's a lot of granulation tissue, debris, and diseased bone, fimbriated or sharp bone left. And so this is the burr that we use to clean all that up. And basically we just go in there and paint away everything that's abnormal. So this cat's on its back. We're working on the left maxillary quadrant and just using that diamond football burr to contour the bone, remove any tissue that's inflamed, and that creates a nice area for closure. 